Psalm 38, a psalm of David for the memorial offering. O Lord, rebuke me not in your anger, nor discipline me in your wrath, for your arrows have sunk into me and your hand has come down on me. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no health in my bones because of my sin. For my iniquities have gone over my head like a heavy burden, they are too heavy for me. My wounds stink and fester because of my foolishness. I am utterly bowed down and prostrate. All the day I go about mourning, for my sides are filled with burning, and there is no soundness in my flesh. I am feeble and crushed. I groan because of the tumult of my heart. O Lord, all my longing is before you. My sighing is not hidden from you. My heart throbs, my strength fails me, and the light of my eyes, it also has gone from me. My friends and companions stand aloof from my plague, and my nearest kin stand far off. Those who seek my life lay their snares. Those who seek my hurt speak of ruin and meditate treachery all day long. But I am like a deaf man, I do not hear, like a mute man who does not open his mouth. I have become like a man who does not hear and in whose mouth are no rebukes. But for you, O Lord, do I wait. It is you, O Lord my God, who will answer. For I said, only let them not rejoice over me who boast against me when my foot slips. For I am ready to fall, and my pain is ever before me. I confess my iniquity, I am sorry for my sin. But my foes are vigorous, they are mighty, and many are those who hate me wrongfully. Those who render me evil for good accuse me because I follow after good. Do not forsake me, O Lord. O my God, be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. It is one thing to endure pain. It is another thing to endure pain that you know has come from your own sin. David writes this psalm out of the anguish of his heart. He is completely overwhelmed with life, utterly bowed down and prostrate. But his pain is doubled by the knowledge that this pain is because of my sin, because of my foolishness. As a result, he is at wit's end, enduring physical distress, emotional pain, and relational dysfunction. Every child of God knows something of this pain. To know that various trials in life arise from our own foolishness, this is a double pain. For we are not innocent victims of someone else's folly. It is our own folly. Does God have an answer for this? Is this an anguish that goes beyond the resources of the grace of God? Can true believers sin their way out of the mercy of God? May it never be. The Apostle Paul insists with reassuring clarity that where sin piles up, grace piles up even higher. God's answer for those who squander His grace through folly is more grace. In Jesus, this unending fountain of inexhaustible grace has been secured. In perfect justice and righteousness, God can treat believers not in accord with what they deserve on their own. Praise God. Thank you.